Good evening, good evening, good evening. Welcome to another What's Up Wednesday. This is episode 97, if I got that right. Welcome to uh, my YouTube channel, Go Small, Live Large. I'm back from vacation. I've missed four What's Up Wednesdays in a row. Not for any other reason than I had some really stand-in guest hosts and I was really off the grid, I guess, a little bit. Welcome to Go Small, Live Large, and What's Up Wednesday. If we're meeting for the first time, howdy, my name is Scott. Thank you for joining us on the live or the replay. And I already see a whole bunch of regulars in here, so thank you for joining me. Uh, I'm a little rusty tonight, I have to admit. I have gotten out of my mojo a little bit, but uh, I got a big show for you tonight. And um, I hope I don't get too choked up talking about this, but uh, it's gonna be a, a gangbuster show as it is every week. So uh, let me tell you what's going on tonight. And um, you are, uh, yeah, we're talking about cruise versus camper. Wait till you see some of these insights, see if you agree with me or not. And um, here's our show th uh, show agenda for this evening. Uh, pros and cons, cruising versus traveling in a van. Uh, libation Live is made by angels. And I've got, I've got a song of the week for you that I discovered in Rome, Italy. And um, it's one of the things I love to do is just discover music wherever I am. And uh, excuse me, if you're <clears throat> new to the channel and haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. Why? Because we give you cool van tours, we give you cool van, uh, van tips, show you van products, and then show you van places. And what we do here is we learn together, we share together, but you decide what's best for you. And that's what we really want you to do is just think through this stuff very carefully. And so you're not spending a lot of time or uh, money doing things that aren't fulfilling your goals. So subscribe to the channel, please. We'd love that. We're growing like crazy right now. Uh, but really the show is all about your questions. So it's a live Q and A. Anything is fair game. Here's a couple of subjects for you to think about. Um, in particular, three season camping. Winter has shown up with a vengeance. And I am all about three season camping as in staying out of cold weather. Um, so if that's on your mind, that is uh, something I am fresh uh, in the face with, um, which is kind of why I'm where I am tonight. The next thing is cruising on a boat. Uh, I have fresh insights and information on this. We're going to share with you tonight. This is a princess cruise. This is the Regal Princess, the exact boat we were on. And the red arrow is where our uh, mini suite was. It was really in a sweet spot uh, because you see that the shade there so it was never in full sun so you can actually enjoy um, our patio which is quite large and uh, I would recommend a midship cabin because it really helps reduce some of the uh, uh, the bouncing around was kind of our experience so uh, if you have any cruise questions um, I might have some answers for you in fact we're already planning our third our next cruise uh, in March. Uh, Libation Live. So if you're not familiar with Libation Live, uh, this comes from two things. Number one, there's a lot of tastes on the road. We like to share those with you. This happens to be um, a bottled bourbon uh, we're going to be talking about tonight. This is Angel's Envy. And the second reason we do this is it was kind of inspired by um, Robert of uh, Traveling Robert. He runs around in Winnebago Tobel and um, he has an IPA every Friday when he does his thing. So um, I'm getting a little bit of a following around bourbon. And um, so we're going to share some of that with you tonight. In fact, we're going to start with Libation Live because this has been quite a week. I literally landed. Uh, I left Rome last Thursday. I arrived in uh, Miami last Thursday. And then I flew to Louisville the next day. A couple days. It was like winter. Uh, four inches of snow about in Louisville. And then hightailed it Sunday, Monday. Um, to uh, Chattanooga and then um, just to get rebalanced with the van and now I'm in Atlanta so it's been quite a week and um, so we're gonna do a libation live so early tonight normally wait till the end not today <laughs> we're shifted up a little bit so get your glasses ready and uh, Sherry that's a big glass of ice water for you uh, young lady so let me tell you about this bourbon uh, this is made in Louisville uh, Kentucky Louisville oh, I never get that right Louisville that'll really upset some folks um, and what makes this special is they finished this bourbon in a Ruby Port wine casks. And they're right, it is super subtle. In fact, I can barely even taste it. Now, I have enjoyed a little of this um, over the last few weeks. I've had this for a couple months now. But let's um, put a little of this in the glass and you can see the color. I don't even need a little more than that. Good Lord. There we go. Um, the color is just spectacular. The nose is. Man, you can just barely get a hint of the 
port. I love port wine, by the way. We took two wine tastings um, on the on the cruise ship. They used to do bourbon, uh, but no longer due to COVID. Please explain the difference between a wine tasting and a bourbon tasting on a cruise ship. COVID excuse for everything <laughs> or nothing at all. Um, let's see what else we have for you here. So, you know I like my my bourbon, and many of you do as well. Um, but because of the Russos, I learned of one documentary about learning bourbon. So let me share this with you. Again, this is what we do. We learn together, we share together, then you decide what's best for you. You don't have to drink alcohol to be a friend of the Go Small Live Large community, but it doesn't hurt either. <laughs> so um, Joe and Kate Russo, my heroes, my mentors, uh, they're the only reason I'm here tonight and probably why you're here tonight. They're the most awesome, wonderful people. Uh, that's where I parked my van while I was in Europe at their house. When I got back on Saturday night, we um, watched this show. It's a documentary. Jot this down, take a screenshot, and if you haven't seen this, um, you can buy it, you can rent it. Um, it's it's the story of bourbon, and it's a really well done documentary. And it will probably bring a little tear to your eye like it did me and Joe, because we're just so passionate about this. And you understand the history, the passion, why this stuff is so important these days. Um, but wait, there's more. I actually found one that Joe didn't know about. So I watched it. Here it is for you. That's got a really big old URL on there. But if you just Google search this, it too can be bought, rented. I bought both and downloaded them to my iPad through uh, Apple TV. And what this documentary really uh, showcases is the Kentucky history with bourbon. Um, man, if you were to, if you do not want to uh, move to Kentucky when you're done seeing this show uh, you need to check your temperature because I'm like ready to move to Kentucky like now um, so I'm uh, so if you're into that kind of stuff uh, again that's what we do is here we share with you and I want to get that right out of your gate so toast to everybody to your health this is the month of Thanksgiving and we got so many things to be thankful for literally so to your health mm. it's so delicious by the way, you can find really good whiskey in the um, mini markets and the grocery stores in um, in the um, in Rome. It's pretty crazy. Um, something else, really big thing happened yesterday. Anybody know what it was? Yeah, not Donald Trump. Uh, this actually happened at 1:47 this morning Eastern Time. This is the SLS space launch, the Artemis One, and I stayed up. To my chagrin, couldn't sleep, so I stayed up. And this is, I recorded it on my um, iPad, and this reminds me so much of the MTV Saturn V rocket taking off right. And uh, let's just give a toast to the NASA team. Been working on this for like 20 years, right? They've kind of recycled the um, space shuttle engines, updated them, and this thing is on its way to the moon, literally. Um, I am so excited to be alive for this. We're going to have people on the moon in two years. Let's give a toast to the Artemis team and the NASA and everybody involved in that. Oh, my gosh. Now we're just getting started, right? Oh, I'm all fired up tonight. Okay. Uh, let me see what else we've got here. And, oh, yes, we don't want to forget about this. Um, you can make a jingle in the jar um, to pay for some of these these uh, uh, bottles of bourbon. Um, so what it is, is uh, a couple things. Uh, the tip jar is meant to um, give a tip to the channel. Uh, you press a dollar sign and um, then you get your options there. Uh, YouTube gets, um, I think it's 40%, if not 30, anyway. Um, but every dollar matters. It helps support the channel, literally. So um, I didn't have a job. This is what I do for a living, believe it or not. So um, if you want to give a jingle in the jar, I sure do appreciate it. that does um, elevate your question or comment. So we all see it more quickly and you do get a jingle in the jar. And if you want to see what you can do without spending any dough, if you can do this for us, and that is put three stars, three question marks before your question, it helps me see it more readily out of the chat stream. Um, and that's how you can get your uh, question and comment seen more quickly. All right, how are we doing so far? Um, all right, so this is where, this is the month of Thanksgiving, right? So I owe a huge thank you to each and every one of you that watch these videos, that subscribe to the channel, that give a tip, because what really set into me as I was floating around and roaming around Europe for almost a month is I am not 
tethered to the corporate man anymore. And without you, I could not do that. And I'll drill one level deeper, and that is a huge thank you to uh, the five people that were guest hosting while I was taking a break, which I badly needed. And that is, we had guest hosts for the last four What's Up Wednesdays. So um, I am not kidding. They did a superb job. Um, so a toast to their health, and I'm sure they're taking the night off tonight while I'm working. And um, I just want to say, th wow, thank you, each and every one of you. Uh, Mason Mike, I did his from Florida, which actually worked out well because we found some technical issues we had to resolve. Um, but then um, Sherry was next, and I tried to stay awake. It was 2 in the morning in Europe, and um, after a long day of touring, touristy, touristy stuff, uh, it was really tough, so I didn't make it all the way through it. But I watched uh, the replay, and everybody, I, I watched the replay after that because it was too late, too, too tired. So um, let me just recap a couple things. If you haven't seen this, um, bear with me because they are owed a debt of my gratitude for really stepping up. And that's what I just love about this community. It's so amazing. So this is Mason Mike. This, he was the first to go. Um, he, again, we learn, we share. So he talked about his awning coming off literally while he was driving off his van, it deployed. So he was sharing what to do, what happened, what to do to fix it. Um, but I think the thing that really uh, got me misty eyed was, was this, his tribute to me. And he's kind of a big, strong dude. And for him to get a little choked up, got me super choked up. And um, Mason Mike, just thank you. Uh, let, uh, let me be your van, bro. It was so, so great. Um, then the next week we had um, Sherry and she was doing a great job. Her fan tour we did has uh, had almost 400,000 views. That's pretty cool. Um, but she did a great job. She was standing up for it. She was full of uh, vim and vigor. And what I just loved about hers, other than libation light being water, holy cow. <laughs> And she did this standard routine where she was flipping cards in the air. And I did my best to capture that on a screenshot today. And um, just a great job, Sherry. Um, just so, so perfect. Next up was uh, Frisco T, as I call Teresa. And she did a great job. Uh, one of the best pictures of a coachman. You should be contacting Nick, a coachman, uh, Teresa, to, to um, sell him this picture. Because they should be using it in their advertisements. It's that good. Um, and what I liked about hers is she was just cool as a cucumber. Her van looks like an apartment. And I think what really struck me here is the comment below. This is from Jane. All five of these people, three solo and one couple, work together in my absence to support each other, do tech support. And it was just the most amazing thing. Again, this community, I am so blessed and so fortunate. And... Um, I'm trying to get choke up, um, but she was just really uh, great. I think the her big thing was, other than having a washer machine in her van, she was um, it was about the people, and I totally agree with that. It's all about the people you meet, the friends you make, the friends you stay in touch with, and the community that we build together, which is what this whole thing is about. This is not me being a sage on a stage. It's about us learning and sharing and coming together. I think it's just so amazing. Uh, then last week we had um, Roger and Jane. Uh, they are the king and queen of mods. Okay. And um, they did a superb video uh, just a few weeks back um, walking through a number of those uh, of their van mods. And um, here they are. Uh, I was glad to see Jane get a word in edgewise. <laughs> It was kind of funny, uh, but this one really kind of got the, got the uh, the chuckles rolling. Uh, everybody's like, "What is this thing behind you?" Um, so just a huge thanks again to uh, the guest hosts. I can't tell you what a relief it was for me being able to take that time off. I, there's no way I could have done it um, in in Europe on the on the cruise ship. The the, the Wi-Fi was. Uh, it was RV park quality it was horrendous. Um, so just a big shout out to uh, those guest hosts, and um, there may be other guest hosts in the future. You know, taking a week off every couple months from this might be kind of fun. Give somebody else a chance to mouthpiece on their story. Uh, but really serious as a hard talk about this, we build our community together. Um, I'm just your benevolent dictator, I guess. But I, it's about all of us coming together to learn, share. And how can we be better humans and discover things in our vans? That's what it's about. So thank you, each of you. So to your health. If you watch that documentary, I think the um, Kentucky Street one, uh, you'll understand where that comes from more readily. All right. So where am I coming at you from? 
holy cow we're 15 minutes in early we gotta see a lot of, say highlight to a lot of folks and we've got some super chats coming up so i'm coming at you from greater atlanta that's my van her name is miss lily if you're not familiar with that i'm at a day's in boy i wish i stayed in my van that's kind of a different story we'll maybe get into that um where am i exactly let me zoom in here for you so Atlanta is really a huge city. Um, I am at the red arrow. The black arrow is pointing at Hartsfield Jackson Atlanta International. I think it's the biggest airport in the world by planes coming and going. It's just a huge, and we're right over the, um, the takeoff runway. So if you hear background noise, that's what it is. Uh, this is my van from the outside. I was just finishing setting things up. And if you peek in the window, that's what you're going to see. And if you're sitting over my shoulder, that's what you're going to see. That's what's happening in the broadcast studio this evening in Miss Lily to do the What's Up Wednesday. But why am I in this area? Because it's winter. I'm supposed to be actually up in Chicago. Um, currently, it's going to be 37 tonight. Two days ago, um, Monday, that blue was everywhere across the country except literally Fort Lauderdale, Lake, uh, West Palm Beach. Tampa and Miami. Everything else was blue in the country. Um, and when I say blue, I mean like freezing blue. So here's a snapshot of weather today. College Park technically is the town that I'm in. Um, look at the daytime. Those are 50s-ish in College Park. Um, barely freezing at night. But if you look at Chicago, where I'm actually supposed to be right now, it doesn't get above freezing really until Monday of next week. And what worries me and what worried me, which is why I hightailed it down south, is look at those overnight temps. There is no way my van could survive that. Even plugged into an RV park, I would be super sketchy. Um, not moving, no way. I'm not putting my van through it, nor my body. So that's what brings me here because I'm flying away to, um, I have a doctor appointment tomorrow. So I'm taking the shuttle to the airport, walking out with my backpack, doing my doctor appointment, two of them which is why it's kind of up there, and then um, walking back on the plane and get back down here to Atlanta where it's warm-ish. And in this area, um, let me zoom in here for you. This is um, what gasoline is going for. I paid $2.87 at Costco today. Uh, the going rate, uh, $3.19. And diesel is $2 more than gasoline. And this town that I'm in is largely apartments. So those 12.5 million, and the 1.8 million, those are apartment complexes. This is a uh, kind of a lower income-ish. Um, these are uh, you know hard-working folks living in these apartments around here. I'm pretty sure that work at the airport. So, um, so that's what I got for you so far. How are we doing? Give a thumb up. Sure, appreciate that. Um, let me just say hi to a few folks, and then we'll roll into our main topic. I'm a little uh, long on the tooth tonight. But I want to um, just give our, our normal shout outs. And if you're familiar with the program, that's what we like to do. So uh, let us know where you're watching from. That's super important. I've lost my cursor again. Here it goes. Like I said, I'm a little out of practice. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so let's say hi to some folks. And um, that's what we'd like to do in this part uh, right here. So Denim Rue, thank you for being in the um, in the group tonight. Really appreciate that. Um, I can tell you my stateroom was bigger than my van by about... Mm, I would say 2.5 times. We had a mini suite, as it was called. We had a couch. That was a big difference. Um, but yeah, it was pretty, pretty awesome. Uh, there's Ron in the house. And um, yeah, thanks to uh, all the Scott Phelan ghosts, uh, guests, as we said. Uh, just they did a superb job. David was in Spain. Um, so the cruise ship landed. Last stop was Barcelona. We'd been there, done that. So we um, actually flew back to Rome for a four or five days of just chilling. So welcome back from Spain. That's a great country, isn't it? Um, there's Sharon in the house, Ohio Sharon. Uh, weather was perfect. Thank you for asking. It was absolutely, it rained one night overnight while we were on the ship. Um, it was perfect autumn weather, weather. It was you know low 70s in the day and 50s at night. It was just unbelievably, uh, it was super windy at um, Mykonos in Greece. Apparently it's windy there all the time. Mace Mike in the house. Good to see you. Here's Jade. Uh, welcome back. Um, it's glad to be back. Uh, yeah, it's, you know, I, I landed, I got to um, Louisville on um, Friday. Uh, the Russo's picked me up and Saturday morning I woke up to four inches of snow. I'm like, <laughs> this is wrecking every plan I had. Um, 
I hate hot weather. I hate cold weather. I'm the middle of the road guy. Uh, John's in the house. Good to see you, sir. Sherry, of course. Sherry, what's up? Um, nice to see you. Thanks for being here. Dave's in the house. Tupelo, Mississippi. I actually was planning to come out of Chicago, go through um, um, Memphis and Tupelo, because that's Tupelo's where Elvis kind of grew up, and um, Memphis, of course. And then I was headed to um, another town where Jimmy Rogers is buried. So those plans all got thrown under the wind because of cold, running from cold. Um, got Justin in the house. Good to see you, sir. Teresa in the house. 50 degrees. Texas. That's nice. Bob in the house. Thank you. 356. Oh, wow. Uh, Rob's uh, Rich is in the house with Cecilia. Good to see you. You take Kyle uh, to your RVs. No, I didn't even turn the camera on to capture any video other than just for personal use. I really just unplugged. But it's funny, as we get closer to the end, you know, it's kind of like Sunday night jitters, right? For those of you that have jobs. Um, I was kind of like, there's all this stuff I need to get working on. So um, it, it, it lasted for about the first 10 days of the 17. And then he and I were both um, ready to get going. But yeah, we didn't. I, mm, yeah, we didn't. Jack's in the house. Jack, you are in the um, Atlanta area, aren't you? I was going to reach out to you and see if we could connect up. Uh, let's see. Dale's in the house. Mud pies in the house. Great to see you. There's merry go round. Um, feel free to talk amongst yourselves. Uh, hey Kim, you send, see the thing I texted you from our one year ago, our camp out in uh, Fort Worth, stockyards, uh, roads of life. I am back. Yes, it's great to be here. Uh, Tinley Park, so great. Um, all right, so let's a couple more. Wow, I'm really behind. Okay, let me keep moving. Um, so if I missed you, I apologize. I want to get to our main topics. Um, but there's just so many great things to talk about tonight, right? So, okay, let's keep rolling. Uh, but let's know where you're watching from. I always love that. And if you are in a country we don't have a flag on the map, this one's a little dated, but we'll add that to the map uh, going forward. This is going to be like this tonight. Oh, no. Uh, oh, no. Where's my cursor? Right there. Uh, what's up, Wednesday? Okay. So we got some cool guests coming up. And have a big announcement on this too. So, um, Outdoorsy, um, we're going to meet up with them in March. But December 14, we got Van Life Outfitters. They're putting together an event, and they build vans and build van gear. Uh, we got Road Trek on January 11. Um, the VP of Sales is coming to talk with us about Road Trek. Love their vans. Um, love more vans. They build vans, and they are uh, they do rumple blankets. Watch our video on that. And then I can say oh, Outdoorsy. Uh, I've been in touch with drum roll please, Wingham. And um, we are supposed to have a meeting in the next couple of weeks, and uh, they are going to be on the show and do some other things. I'm pretty sure. Um, we'll leave it at that. Uh, oops, let me get that off there. Um, there we go. And what else we got for you? Yeah, join me on the Instagram. We love the Instagram. And um, we might start doing some Instagram lives. Uh, Florida Super Show in, in, in Tampa. In January, we're going to do a meetup on January 19th to Thursday. So if you're planning to come to the Tampa show, I'm only going to be there Wednesday, Thursday, and then I'm probably going to bug out, um, be there for industry day, no public on Tuesday. Um, we'd love to see you there at the Winnebago dealer. Um, but this is the one thing I'm really excited about. Um, let's, oh, I'm excited about Super Show too. Um, and we need to, so I got a little new information on this. This is a Vanbury campout that is not produced by me, but is produced by um, the... Um, Van Life Outfitter team. They're, the URL is floridavanlife.com. Um, that's where you can go and buy tickets. They still have early bird tickets. Um, it's it's dry camping essentially. February three and five, just uh, about an hour east of Tampa. And when you uh, make your reservation, uh, there's a a field that comes up that says, "How did you hear about this?" Type in G S L L. That's go small, live large. Uh, they got about 15 vans associated with this. The whole point of this is we can stay in our little tribe together, which would be so cool. And if you haven't done that, wait till you do that. It's the most fun thing. Um, so love to see you there. I'm super, super uh, excited. And I'm just, we're really put planting a flag in this event. So, okay, let me um, give a shout out to some of these um, uh, super ho or the super chats and then we'll get into our main topic of the night which is cruise ship versus van a camper van so Mason Mike thank you sir for um, 
<laughs> for having me back, I guess. Um, just thank you again for doing what you did. It was such such a relief. And um, then I'm in the house. Uh, $10. Holy cow. Uh, buy your guest host a drink. Yes, that's a good idea. Um, I need to do that for them. Oh, Neil and Britt's in the house. This is great. They are an awesome couple. Are you guys going to the um, Florida Van Life Gathering, Neil, Britt? Pick a van. They have two, I think, right? And get hightail it over there in um, to the van life. Kim's in the house. Thank you, Kim, for that. Kim and Tim, um, appreciate that. Uh, go buy a drink. That's a good point. Let's have a drink. Because after midnight tonight, I can't have anything to eat or drink until about 3 p.m. tomorrow. So i got to get it in while I can tonight. Thank you for that. I appreciate that. Here's a Frisco tea. You guys didn't need to do that. <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Go buy a drink. There's a common theme here. Um, it was a pleasure. Whoops. Uh, let's see. Yeah, guest hosts were terrific. So true. And um, they put a lot of work into it. And I paid them a huge amount of money. I mean, a huge amount of money. Like zero. <laughs> they did another goodness of their hearts. Holy cow. Here's Kathy in the house. She knows how fun we have when we get together. Um, that is so great to have you here at the live. Here's uh, Ben Liberty in the house. Thank you. Uh, God. So here's the deal. How many, raise your hand, have been to Europe in the last, I don't know, five years? Well, the good news is the euro is the same as the dollar. And if that was not the case five and ten years ago for sure. It was almost one buck to almost two dollars at some point one point to buy a single euro so it's on par with the dollar and food and beverage um, booze meaning wine and beer is really inexpensive you could have a real Italian pizza in Rome at a non-touristy cafe type street cafe um, two glasses of wine for literally um, $15 not kidding yet and they don't expect a tip and they still treat you like a human. They don't grump and grouse over you like our folks here and they expect a 22% tip. Um, so you can get away with uh, for not much over there. The best food I think was, not surprising, um, pasta, the pizza, the way they do sandwiches is really good. Uh, man, if you're into the um, into the, the cured hams, it's an art form over there. And cheese, it's just so fresh and so delicious and so cheap. Um, we actually ate a lot of um, Asian food because Kyle gets hungry for Chinese food. Uh, the Vietnamese food, absolutely terrible to the two places we went in Rome. Uh, still was cheap, unlike here. So good question. Thank you, Ben Liberty. Um, let's see, I thought there was a couple more. Did I get them all? Here's Larry Gee. See me, Gee. Welcome back. Thank you, Larry. Appreciate that. Good to see you out there. I appreciate your tips, sir. Thank you for that. All right. So let's, uh, let me share some of this um, on the, the cruise verses, and I think this will make... Uh, get some questions going. I see a bunch in here already. Uh, we might go long. Now, for all you guest hosts, you all went a little bit long, uh, which is just fine. <laughs> so we may do that again tonight. Okay, ship versus van. You guys ready for this? I'm really excited to share this with you. Because it really drilled home why van travel is so different than regular RVs. So I put a poll up just a few hours ago. I should have done this this morning. I didn't think about it early uh, fast enough. Let me zoom in here for you. And the, the question was kind of, a, which would you prefer uh, two weeks of travel in? The cruise with stops and ports to explore for a few hours, camper van discovering as you go, stay long or move along. I've never taken a cruise. I need a camper van first, and I want to do both, van travel and cruise on a ship. Um, I'm super thrilled and not overly surprised that this audience chose um, camper van discovery because that was really the takeaway for me, is that we are so spoiled um, in camper vans that we can move along or stay a long time. Uh, now, what I will say as I go through this is there are some common elements. Let me share this with you. There are some common elements that makes cruise travel really attractive to many people, just like a camper van. The number one thing I think is you pack and pack only once. Now think about that for a second. You can go, we went to, I think, seven different ports of call. We covered five countries and we only loaded the closet once. And it's really nice, just like the camper van. Um, I think the biggest thing, well, I'll leave the bucket list for a second. Um, you could also choose to do nothing or 
everything, just like a camper van. So if you roll in some place, you can just take the day off and not do a darn thing. Or you can buzz around, because you're not really connected to all this stuff at the campground, right? You just kind of run rogue. So you can do everything or do nothing, just like a cruise trip. A lot of things going on around you, but you can choose to do or not. And all of your needs are covered. What I'm trying to say there is that you have everything you need with you. So if you have a well-equipped camper van, uh, you have everything you need literally within a few feet away, and you don't have to need for anything. It's just like a cruise ship. Now, you may have to take the elevator up to the, you know, the boat deck to get some sun, and on a cruise ship, on the three or four main levels and the uh, outer level, deck level, there's a bar about every, I don't know, 200 feet. So, if you, and food everywhere, holy cow. So all your needs are covered, van travel or cruise ship. But I think there's a big distinction, and I didn't really realize this until I went this experience, and that is van travel, RV travel in general, van travel specifically, you can check off things on your bucket list. You can do a bucket list burn down, meaning you're checking those things off, right? Um, cruising allows you to do that too without having to see more than you need, unless you really want the deep dive. And this gives you a taste of some stuff to see if you want to go back. What am I talking about? Let me give you an example. See this. Camper van. Uh, we talked about this a couple weeks ago. Uh, this is the B-17 uh, Flying Fortress. Unfortunately, there's only five it, it flying. One of them crashed and killed the, uh, the the team on the plane. There was a air show, and um, they were doing one of these maneuvers, and they touched. Um, so sadly, people died, and one of these is out forever. <laughs> but um, bucket list checkoff. Fly in an old warbird from World War II. Camper van, thank you. And on the cruise ship... Let me zoom in here for you. Anybody know what this is? Raise your hand if you do. That is Vatican City. That is St. Peter's, the biggest church on earth. And I was headed to, wait for it, big bucket list checkoff to attend mass at St. Peter's. That is the high altar. This is not the one with the four twisted pedestals that's over the tomb of St. Peter. This is the main altar way at the back of the church. If you've been there, you know this. This thing is huge. And it was a mass in Latin. I didn't know a darn thing that they were saying, but I know how to go through the motions. I was following the two nuns in front of me, um, attending mass in St. Peter's in Latin. Big bucket list check off. Thank you, cruise ship. This, let me zoom in here for you. This is on a, one of the famous bridges headed to um, back and see that's a full moon. Clearly, the statue is missing a couple of fingers. I'm pretty sure they're not flipping us off. Um, David. How many people have stood in front of David by Michelangelo? He carved this when he was 26 years old. It's a huge story. It was one block of stone. Somebody started it. Um, it only took a couple of years to put this thing together. But until you stood in front of David in Florence, we took a train from Rome to Florence to go see this. Um, but the reason we were in Italy was the cruise. So... Um, I think one of the best features of David is the look on his face. Um, he's probably got the best looking butt on earth. I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> and um, But again, bucket list check off. How many of you wanted to see this and have not uh, is my point here. A couple more for you. Uh, we've had some good van check offs, but um, I don't need to go see David again. It's kind of one of these, I've seen it, done it, been there, done that, don't need to do it again, right? And um, here's another one for you. What's this? Yeah. Athens, Greece, the Acropoli uh, Acropolis, Temple of Athena. It's been this state of disrepair and uh, repair for, I, I couldn't even tell you how long, but I've always wanted to go to say that I've been there, that I've done that. Checked off my bucket list, right? Now there's places like that in the US you can run around a camper van, but truly you'd have to fly in and I'll be honest, we thought Athens was kind of underwhelming. So going back to Athens, not going to happen. But you can say I've been there, done that. A couple more for you. Then I got my pros and cons. Anybody recognize this? I think there's three domed roofs in blue paint that's more famous. This is Mykonos Island. These are really famed windmills. These are uh, residential and restaurants on the coast. Literally, literally water splashing inside um, so behind you is the windmills 
So if you're looking at this image, if you turn to your turn around, you're looking at that. And we thought, well, that's kind of cute. And then we were wandering through these um, really narrow Mykonos Greek island alleys that are really streets. And everything's white. Everything is white. It's so cool. And Kyle looks through the doorway and he's like, ah, let's go have a drink. And we're now looking at the same windmills having a libation. Bucket list. Check off. Oh my goodness. I can't tell you. I'm getting um, here just thinking about it. And then uh, once we got rid of the crews, got rid of all the family, it was just him and me. And we wandered around literally for four days. I'm like, I don't want to do anything else. I just want to go back to where we were. I want to be aware of where we are, but see some new things without being a tourist. Let's just live like Italians. So that's what we did. We just wandered around. Uh, me and Kyle found a few things like this. How about this for a street camper? That thing looks like a death trap. <laughs> you see that? It's just like, oh my God, I'm so appreciating my Lily, my Travato. Everywhere you turned, there was an old car and new cars too, tons of scooters. Uh, the point being is just roaming around Rome, checking off a oh, year really is is um is is this a bucket list uh, list check off. So hopefully that gives you a little sense of uh, what some of the common elements are. Let me show you some of the pros and cons. We'll start with the cruise ship. See if you agree with me or not. Cruise ship pros. You have a driver and you have a staff. You got a captain and staff of at least a thousand people waiting on you day and night food and drink everywhere from like five in the morning until two in the morning um, entertainment galore all kinds of casinos live uh, shows trivia <laughs> the trivia was so funny um, bingo a really serious bingo it's easy to relax and you can see things from a water vantage point which you can't always do unless you're like on a boat from somebody so seeing land from water gives you a very at least gives me a very different perspective so I think those are some of the pros of being on a cruise ship how about some of the cons yeah lines with people now fortunately our cruise boat was only had about 2,000 passengers it normally holds about four so there was really not many lines but if that thing was full um, it would have been I've been on we've been on other cruises filled with people and there's lines for everything. What a pain in the butt. Um, time in port. This really got zeroed in on me. If you liked a place, you could only stay there for a few hours. If you didn't like it, like let's get the heck out of here, right? The itinerary is fixed. I mean, you can't do anything about it except either go with it or don't. And there's a forced pace. I didn't really understand this. Um, which kind of goes with the fixed itinerary, which goes to the time in port. And then there's, of course, the travel to and from the cruise ship. And that can be a project. And you know, we flew from um, New York to Rome. And uh, that's a long plane ride. And from Rome to Miami, it's 11 hours on an airplane. So you start figuring those costs, the time back and forth. The cruise ships, while once you get there, is pretty cool. The back and forth to it, if you're going to an overseas destination, can be a real challenge. So let's um, kind of look at those together. Let me know if you agree or disagree. Um, I have a punchline for you here in a minute. Recommendation, that may be a better word for it. Let me show you a couple images of the, of the boat. It was a really nice boat. This is the Regal Princess. There was something magic about watching movies at night, covered in blankets, drinking martinis. It was just really cool. Um, this was cool. Here's a tug pushing us out of one of the ports. I can't remember. Um, but to see these guys, again, they have staff. You don't have to worry about anything. Watching them work, pretty cool. Uh, this is Turkey. We went to um, uh, Usakasi, something like that. And how many people, uh, raise your hand, if you've been to Egypt, Turkey, any of those kind of Middle Eastern-ish countries? I've been to Egypt and Turkey was just like, you are literally seen as a walking ATM and the gauntlet of just trying to walk around and see stuff. We did buy some cheap fake bags there. The, uh, the family was into that, um, but it was so annoying. Every place you turn, they wanted to try and sell you something. They were literally grabbing people, um, not like forcefully, but just you know, kind of putting their arm around you, trying to get you in the store. Um, 
Kyle bought some fake fake stuff, but um, I would never go back to that town. I don't even know why the cruise ship brought us there because it was a waste of oh, time and money. It was just so annoying. Um, but again, that's kind of the deal, right? Is your you have to go. All right, let's talk about the camper van. You ready for this? Let's zoom in here for you. Uh, we got a nice crowd in here tonight. Thanks, everybody. Uh, so camper van travel, kind of comparing the two together, right? So pros, um, you either uh, travel by yourself or with a couple, but you're not traveling with 2,000 of your closest friends. You choose to stay or move. Now there was two stops we would have loved to spend more time with, but um, Usakasi, God, I wish I remember the name, but it was a really funky word in Turkey. You should not even bother getting off the boat. Um, camper van, you set your itinerary, which is pretty cool. You can make new friends as camper van travelers, even in the town or other van owners, and things are super flexible. Um, you could do whatever you want, whenever you want, because you're in charge, you're the captain of your own boat. But there's some cons to all that. Let me zoom in here for you. You have no staff. You're doing everything. And in fact, if you have a cat, you are staff for the cat. <laughs> you're the master of the dog, uh, but you are doing everything. You set your own itinerary, itinerary which is cool, except you got to figure out what you want to do, where you want to go, dot 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 where are you going to overnight those are all decision fatigue factors i think uh, that's what i call them and of course there's weather so like i've been running from the weather uh, for the last three days and uh, that can be a problem whereas if your cap you know your captain cruise boat captain is now actually we did not go into one port because the, the weather was bad they went around it um, which is a blessing because we ended up in a much cooler place um, genova italy on the coast such a great town so what do you think on those um, pros and cons? So here's my recommendation for you. I think this is what I have. Uh, yeah. Well, let me give you a couple of van pictures real quick. Just zoom in here for you. Um, this is a mural on the wall of Elizabethtown, Kentucky. Super cute little town brought there by a harvest host. Blaze your own trail. I think that's the punchline with the van. Here's me street camping in Nashville a couple of years ago. Super cool neighborhood. Here's me when my van was still silver. Uh, my first time trying BLM land camping by myself. That's where I got attacked by donkeys that night. My cat Luke did nothing to save me. That's the sunset, sunrise rather, over uh, Needles, California, Lake Havasu, kind of in the mountain range there. Uh, it was spectacular, except I was scared to death. Here's my recommendation for you. Do you have a bucket list? If you don't have a bucket list, my recommendation is sit down with yourself and your spouse and make a bucket list. There's no way I would have ended up in St. Peter's listening to a Latin mass at 5 p.m. You have to be there, number one, but then be intentional about going. Everybody's like, I don't have no interest in that. You don't have to have interest. It's on my bucket list. I'm going. In fact, by myself is better. <laughs> Um, my question, do you have a bucket list? Is it prioritized? Is it geographically organized so you don't miss something? Um, even if your van is winterized, um, it's not going to be a hard freeze for the next four months. It's on and off, right? So take a van trip. Take something off your bucket list. Um, cruise ship. Give us some thought. Like I mentioned earlier, we're already booking the next cruise. Um, we're going to go down South America, leaving out of Fort Lauderdale, return to Fort Lauderdale, cutting out that hassle of international travel. Airplanes. Enough said on airplanes. Um, but we're going to burn down some of our bucket list items by going to like Costa Rica, and there's a, a four or five cities. Um, we're going to burn down our bucket list uh, to go do some stuff. So check the itinerary of cruise ships. I think that's what cruise ships are, at least for the way we're traveling right now, is meant to do is, is check off bucket list items that we just want to see say we've been there done that and if we like it we can go back under our own steam but if we didn't like it we at least said we saw the acropolis in athens and move along please um it also helps you identify your travel method um i could get into taking a couple cruises a year we're talking about that right now incorporating with some of that into the the channel um but I think by doing different ways to travel, you help learn your travel method. It helps you be a better packer, packing more lightly. 
um, doing some homework in advance. So the whole point of this is, is uh, it was great to have the time off. Europe's amazing. If you haven't been to Europe ever, what are you waiting for? It's super inexpensive right now. Everything is open, but the crowds are not there. Um, if you need some specific recommendations, if you're going to Rome, I would pick an Airbnb by the Piazza Novona, um, which is a very famous uh, Piazza. Uh, our Airbnb was $120 the first go around, and when we came back, it was $140, $135 for a two bedroom, one bath. Uh, great Wi Fi, spectacular location. You can live like a local, um, you're not hauled up in a hotel. Um, so, that's my, my, my serious wish for you is. Do you have a bucket list? If not, get one going. Organize it, geographically organize it. Take a van trip over the next three months. Even in cold weather, you can do it. Just not a hard freeze um, for endless days. I certainly wouldn't do it if you're stationary. And then look at doing a cruise. Um, I think it's a way to check off bucket list items easily, and then you find places you might want to go. I am not trading in van life for cruise life, let me tell you. Um, that would drive me bananas. All right, how are we doing so far? What time is it? Oh my God, it's 6.45. <laughs> that is central. Okay, so let me see what we've got some questions going on here, I'm sure. And we're doing Libation Live. You guys having fun? Hmm. And ladies, I'm so, back, so glad to be back. It was so nice to have a break. The, the world is really so big. I, I just, you know, we are so spoiled as Americans. Now think about this for a second. Gasoline in Rome is $8 a gallon. I did not see a Ford 150 truck, two door, four door, dually, for almost a month. Now, if that doesn't make your brain explode, I'm not sure what will. Um, everything there is small in Europe. Everything is, uh, in Rome at least, uh, was reasonably priced. Um, the airfare was reasonably priced. So it's, it's a great time to go to, to Europe to experience the history of. Uh, Rome is very Roman and then Catholic. Greece was very, you know, Grecian, is that the right word? Uh, I don't know my Greek history very well. So Rome, um, we're, we're planning on going back to, to Rome, but uh, um, I think the biggest thing about traveling is it ke keeps your curiosity on 10. And if you're not a curious person, um, I kind of feel sorry for you, to be honest, uh, because it's a big world out there, man, and ladies. So, hey, if you got anything out of that, give it a thumb up. Sure appreciate that. And let's look for some questions here. Uh, then I got a song of the week for you. Uh, great question here from Judy. How did it feel when you got back in your van? That is a glorious question, Judy. Um, it was funny because I was in Airbnb apartments, basically. The cruise... Uh, mini suite was spacious, had low ceilings, but very spacious, very comfortable. Um, I stayed two nights at the Russo's house in a, in a you know, standard bedroom, and I got in my van. I didn't even go to my van, didn't even look into Miss Lily when I first returned. I didn't step into her until Sunday when I was leaving. And when I was moving my stuff uh, into the van that I had taken out traveling, um, the smallness of the van was immediate and apparent. And after spending about 10 minutes in here, uh, kind of putting stuff away a little bit, I felt so much better. I cannot stand big spaces, even this cheap-ass hotel room I'm in because I'm have an early, early flight in the morning. Um, I just can't stand big spaces anymore because it's not necessary. We have so much space, we don't know what to do with it. Spoiled Americans, right? Um, nice problem to have, I guess. Um, but I just got acclimated really quick, and then I got I actually thinned stuff out because I bought, brought a few items back. And um, so, one in, one out. So I had to judge really carefully buying it, because I knew something had to go. Um, but it just felt so good, and sleeping in the van. I sleep the best in the van, making coffee in the van, using the toilet in the van. Um, this just feels so good to me. Thank you for the question, it's a great question. Um, <laughs> such a great question. Uh, let's see, there's questions here. Kim wants to know, have you tried Texas Bourbon in Fort Worth? If not, you must head to Texas now. Come to Texas when I depart Florida in February. So I'll be in Florida um, right before Christmas. Then January is a super show. Then we got the Van Life Gathering. And then I'm going to skedaddle across the south into Texas before it gets hot. Um, I have had 
bourbon made in Houston, which is fantastic. Discovered that in Racine, Wisconsin. I have not had any from Fort Worth, um, but I can't wait to get back to Texas. Although I must say I'm, my two favorite states right now are Kentucky and Tennessee. <laughs> um, but uh, say hi to Tim. Appreciate that. Okay, looking for some uh, uh, questions. Uh, wow, I'm really behind here. Let's see. Uh, looking for questions. Questions. Um, and I'm really excited to go back to, the, to Judy's question here. Um, it's like a slight delay. The Wi-Fi is not awesome. Um, Another reason that I showed up in this area, I have some Volta appointments, some Volta duties, and I'm getting lights installed in my van, the um, kind of the adventure van lights, uh, by the same outfit that put my brush guard on. So I have an appointment on the 28th um, to have lights put on um, front and back. I'm really excited about that. Um, I'm just so glad to be back in the van. It's just what a great, beautiful question. Um, uh, looking, 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 looking. Uh, yeah, it's, thank you, uh, Frisco T. Um, give it a shot. It's it's really a curious story about bourbon. Um, I would watch them both. Um, Kentucky Straight is leaned toward the history of bourbon in Kentucky, but I would watch both of them. Um, whiskey, in particular, bourbon in general, um, really ties in with American history very well. Everybody's fam familiar with the um, Boston Tea Party, but there was the Whiskey Rebellion, um, when the United States government, early, early government, um, had to raise money for the army to fight somebody, I can't remember, they were going to tax whiskey. This stuff's always been taxed. I did not know this until I saw the um, straight, uh, the Kentucky Strait uh, documentary. Um, a, rick, a barrel sitting in a rickhouse. Storage, first of all, it, it, it evaporates about 3% per year, just through the evaporation process. State of Kentucky taxes that barrel sitting, doing nothing other than what it's meant to do, which is soak up the juices from the wood. But if you have something, a barrel sitting there for 10 years, you're losing 30% on volume, and you're paying tax for 10 years on that on that barrel. It just make, it gives you a real sense of, you know, what's right word. Appreciation. Uh, Larry's happy with the Artemis. Yeah, I'm so excited. Um, these guys get, let's see, I worked at the team Aerojet working on the build of rocket engines that power the Artemis mission. No way, dude. What a stud. Um, you know, they had, a, they had a, a, a hold last night. And I'm like, oh, please don't make me stay up till four in the morning, even though I ended up doing it anyway. Um, but what a teamwork to get that thing launched. Um, you know, we've gotten kind of used to this stuff. Thank you, SpaceX. But this was a massive accomplishment. Um, so congratulations, CMG. Really appreciate that. Uh, um, Dave wants to know, what is the temperature map app that you use? That's called Dark Sky. Uh, it's a super cool because you shrink it down to a globe and you can spin it, which I think is kind of cool. Apple bought this a couple of years ago. It's actually going to um, discontinue being supported, which means it'll be off the App Store, I think, December or January, like next month. Um, it was a paid app, five bucks. Uh, Apple bought it. They've incorporated a lot of that into their uh, iPad and and phone apps. Um, it doesn't really have the globe like I like, but it's, they they improved it. Um, although I do think Dark Sky is actually more accurate because it pinpoints your exact GPS location. Um, but yeah, Dark Sky. But the, the two uh, Apple apps for weather are pretty good. Yeah, let's talk about this. Mason Mike, do they do bourbon in Europe? Yes and no. Beer. So, so get this. You can buy a Coca-Cola. really tiny one. It's like um, probably three euros. And it's made in Europe Coke. Um, Coke Zero everywhere. Glass of wine, $2. Glass of beer, buck fifty to 2 bucks euros. Um, unless you're in a touristy area, then they jack it. You can double the price because uh, the tourists are sitting around. Um, bourbon? is around everybody's got Jim Beam everybody's got um, Jack Daniels um, on the cruise boat they had a couple good brands um, Bullet and Buffalo Trace and Gentleman Jack I found the one bar that had the last bottle uh, hit that the last couple of days hot tip on um, cruising by the way uh, buy the drink package if you like to consume booze um, we bought the drink package I can't remember what it was 
it was for, for the room or per person, 1500 bucks sticks in my mind. But that allowed per person to have 15 drinks per day. Now do the math on that. That's worth every drop on the boat. Um, only one day did I hit my max, but I think I was using my, use this Bluetooth thing to wave your wand. Uh, I think I was buying people drinks. I was, although I probably had too much that day, but that was the only day I hit 15 drinks. Uh, bourbon in Europe, there was two or three bars we stumbled into. Um, looked cool from the outside. It was like a steakhouse kind of thing. They had a beautiful collection. We stayed there, sampled quite a bit, made some friends, um, Italians. Uh, the store sold um, bourbon. There, well, I bought a bottle of Buffalo Trace. I think it was 60 euro. That was expensive. But Bullet and Four Roses, kind of the low end ish, um, was all regular price, cheaper than here actually. I, just, I was shocked at how cheap it was. Wine, a good bottle of wine, you know, eight, 10, 12 euros. Um, but it was there. Uh, pretty limited selection. Um, Jack Daniels is probably the most prevalent. Not a huge Jack Daniels fan. A little too charcoaly for me. Good question. Um, Sparks Guy wants to know added 30 amp hookup to the house. Plug the Nova in over the winter with my Truba set at 55. Do you think you should? Uh, Use electric mode only. Um, it'll probably be okay. I would make sure you have your, uh, you say you have 30 amp hookup, but is that connected to a 30 amp circuit? Uh, the mistake I did uh, early, early on, in my second month, I did the same scenario, except I plugged a cord, well, big, into a, a 15 amp, asked for 30 amps, popped the breaker probably the next morning when the heat came on, electric heat, froze my van for two weeks. Um, I was over in um, London. So if you open up things, I would just make, kind of drain the water out. That's what I did um, when I got to the Russo's, is um, emptied all the... And that was the first time I'd ever done that. And I'm so glad I did, because it froze a few nights before I got back. Uh, so I'd empty all the water out, empty your tanks, you know, clean them out good, um, turn the fridge off. So there really isn't anything to heat, um, unless you're going to leave stuff in it, because uh, you're going to be scooting around, which I would recommend. Um, but... Uh, I think you'd be okay. Maybe, um, Roger, you're in here uh, in, the, in the group, so maybe you can chime in. But I, I wouldn't necessarily waste propane. Uh, the electric heat's pretty good down to about 40 degrees. I don't cover all my windows, so I'm the always the oddball with that. Um, anything below 40, um, like the one night in Chattanooga, the Sunday night, um, it was like 25 at night. It was cold. And I actually got up to turn on the propane heat because they, the, um, the electric cannot keep up with two things plugged in, right? Shore power. Um, and if um, Tab is watching this at some point, um, I need to clear my head, man. I, I, I thought about coming to see you and, and hitting you up, but we got to get you um, down to Florida again. You guys still may be there. Let's see. Mason Mike wants to know come on down here as well, upper 60s. Yeah, that's the best time to be in Texas and Arizona. New Mexico is this time of year. Uh, go long tonight. We don't mind. We might. What time is it? Sorry, it's 7 o'clock. Oh my God. Um, I've been looking forward to this all week. Uh, so Teresa wants to know, do you know if Wingham will be at Tampa? I don't know yet. Um, so here's the quick story on Wingham. Mm, so don't tell anybody this, but one of you audience angels clued me in that they were actually screen scraping content of mine and a couple of YouTubers, Chad and Paul, Stranger Palooza, and Les Chuckmore Journey, and they created a video out of it, giving none of us credit. Uh, now the only reason after a little bit of B-roll, I showed up on a What's Up Wednesday from the Tampa show, and my Scott at Go Small Live Large showed up. Um, so at least my name was on there. Nobody else was given any credit. And I kind of reached out to him. That's kind of cool. Then I started thinking about it. I'm like, actually, it wasn't cool. Um, so I kind of shamed him into getting back into the table to talk. Um, so I don't know if they're going to be there. My guess, I, I don't want to. We're supposed to be meeting in the next couple weeks to see where they are. Um, I hope to have some good news in the next few weeks. Um, the tribe needs a flag. We do need a flag. Um, what would that be like? Um, we need a logo too. <laughs> we need to would it be funny? Well, we need to schedule some Lukenbach Texas campouts before we go on a cruise together. Um, twice this year. Help me out with that, Jack. Because you and I exchange, exchange notes. Um, I think you're north of uh, Atlanta. It'd be great to uh, drive by camp if you're up for that. 
Neil and Britt, look at you guys. Oh, high rollers. Ooh. Oh, speaking of high rollers, thank you, Neil and Britt. If you haven't met them, they have a, great, a cool channel. They are the greatest people. Um, so chill and just so great. Um, they were at the uh, Chattanooga Adventure Van Expo. Um, come to the Florida Van Life Gathering. Um, so here's a hot tip. Here's how to pay and get a free, pay for your trip and get a free cruise. So Kyle, my other half, is a pretty big gambler. But he's really learned how to pay to play, play to pay. Um, this is many years of working on him. I'll take some credit for it. Um, he actually um, won enough to pay for the trip. And because he was at the casino every night for some time, each night he got a free trip. So we actually have a free cruise. Uh, now, if you're not a big gambler, I wouldn't necessarily advocate that because you'll lose more than the trip's worth. But he um, uh, was able to pay for the trip and get a free one from Princess. It's not the exact room, but they can, you can do the upgrades um, with that credit toward that. So um, if you're kind of the, the gambling ilk, um, that's what we did and plan to go forward. Uh, it is. Thank you, Catherine. So we got uh, this is the right what? right there um a lot of the street artists in the piazza novona um, paint these by hand and uh this is the one i selected for the van uh there's just something about walking into the vatican city and then walking around and seeing um, all the art and um i bought a few things you know like a bracelet and some other stuff like that but yeah that's exactly what that is uh, uh st peter's and there's something about that you know that big church and that these columns coming around it's almost like it's giving you a hug and then there are all these saint statues up above it it's just the coolest thing um and i almost saw the pope um i got there a little late um but they had screens up the the swiss guard route lots of police lots of crowds my guess is the only reason that was happening because he was there doing something um look, it looks like he was doing it was a weekday um but uh, that'd be cool to see the pope right Ah, this is a great question. Mason Mike, how much weight did you gain on the cruise? And did you hit the gym, gym honestly? Um, I did the first day and went at noon. Um, the next morning? Yeah, the next morning at noon. The place was packed. Um, that was the only time I did the gym. However, I did get up and walk. Uh, they had a track. Um, we went around this portion of the, of the boat um, seven times. It was one mile. So I did that almost every day. I uh, weighed myself the first time we got on. We were kind of orienting ourselves. Um, I gained one pound. Um, weighed myself when I got off the boat and we went someplace. Um, and even now I'm, I'm down below where I was. I think the reason was we walked so much. We walked everywhere. I think one day we walked like 13 miles. Um, so I'm pretty happy about that. But I'm eager to get back to the gym program. Uh, let's see. Uh, we go to the Coliseum. Yes, that's a great question. This kind of goes back to the bucket list stuff. Why visit something again unless it really moved you? It's kind of a been there, done that. We did the Coliseum last time we were there. Um, so why go stand in line? Why expense for the tickets? Why take the time to do something you've already done? Let the ones that haven't done it do it. And that's what we did. We went and do things that were new to us um, that we wanted to do. So um, you walk by it many times. It's really cool. Um, the reason it looks the way it does is because all the marble... Uh, facade on the Coliseum is now at St. Peter's right there <laughs> um, they took all the marble off everything um, it's really something to behold if you haven't been to Rome you really need to go to Rome look at this Matthew thank you appreciate that a great deal glad to see you back Scott loved uh, also love the cruise experience Alaska is my best friend that's about the only way I would do Alaska and um, we're talking about it um, we're even talking about Airbnb uh, location in, in Rome. We think it'd be a lot of fun. So, yeah, just cruising is fun. Um, again, it's a bucket list checkoff, right? I want to go see a glacier. I want to see it calving, is that what they call it, when the ice breaks into the ocean. Um, I would trade it for van travel at this point in my life, but the checkoff specific things that you can get access to from a boat, uh, it's the only way to roll. Um, like, I would not fly to Athens to go see the Acropolis. Um, I just wouldn't do it. The time and money to get there and all. I'm so glad I didn't because, it, you know, it was really kind of a letdown, to be honest. Uh, let's see. Sparks guy took a barge trip on a canal network through the Loire Valley in France. That seemed more like 
band show me. Yeah, that's a good point. So there's a lot of these river cruises in Europe in particular, right? Um, that would be really something to explore. Like going up the Danube, that would be cool. Or the Rhine River, one of those giant rivers in Europe. So this will be, this may be offensive to you. It's not meant to be. But I think a lot of those river cruises are, are pretty seasoned citizens. Uh, we were the youngest people on the boat. We were there for Halloween. Um, they lined up the kids in a costume. There was 10 children under 10. There was pro, I saw maybe, maybe generously 10 teenagers. We were the youngest ones on the boat. Everybody was 60 to 80 years old. Some of those people had no business being on a boat, in my opinion. Um, but they were having a grand time. In fact, one lady, and uh, oh, what was her name? Uh, um, Ellen? Eileen. Eileen. I think it was Eileen. 96 years old. Didn't push around a wheelchair, but man, she was fast and furious on the bingo cards. Holy cow. Saw her many times and just always gave her a high five. I'm like, if I'm going to live that old, that's the way I want to go. She was just having so much fun. But we were the youngest ones on the boat. Um, that's okay. More whiskey for me. This is kind of interesting. Esther says, I was in Turkey in 96, loved it. Didn't spend long in Kusadasi. That was it. Because of how touristy it was. Um, the Roman ruins were spectacular. Um, I agree with Shagma's a nightmare. Uh, we even stopped uh, glancing. Yeah, it just reminds me. So I saw, I was in Egypt in um, 1999. And it was such a nightmare. Um, literally, ATM. Everybody wanted money for taking a picture. The, the shopping was just uh, some... some similar situation. Kusadasi, that was the name of it. It was so funny. It was a cute little town, but the more you wandered off, it more was kind of like, it almost got a little sketchy. Um, uh, is this another one? Thank you, Mesa Mike. New trademark line for you, Blaze On. Blaze On. Hmm. I like that. Blaze On. Let's see. Thank you for the tip. I just appreciate that, sir. Um, oh, no way. Water's Edge Bistro, um, which is a Harvest Hose winery. Um, the, to just stroll around it all, super cute town. I want to make a travel van, camper van travel guide on that hound. Yeah, and uh, they have a great bourbon bar. They had 600 bottles of bourbon. Um, it's called the Bourbon Barrel Tavern. And just the coolest staff would talk your ear off on everything bourbon um, in that little town. And there's a pizzeria that made a smoking awesome um, hot Italian sub. Had kind of a funky name. It was around the, on the main square. Um, that is so great. Uh, so river travel. Um, we should put on a list. Uh, smaller, fewer people, more intimate. That's always good. Um, there's, you know, the big boats they just have a lot going on. Um, we are really like princess. We are very impressed. We did one, um, I think Norwegian. And what was the other one? Um, um, oh golly anyway uh, really impressed with Princess they the staff just bent over backwards every staff member you pass they said hello good morning how's your day anything I can get for you they just I, I, <laughs> they need to put um, every customer facing person in America for a job through the Princess Charm School because they and they all are English, uh, English second language people. A lot of folks from the Philippines, India. Um, the food is amazing. I'd do Princess a minute, again in a minute. Uh, <laughs> go water cruise better. Well, go small, live large. You, you know, it's a big boat, but I'm packing with one bag. I, everything I took with me for a month in Europe, basically, fit my duffel bag. That's going small to live large. Thank you for that. I love it. Um, how are we doing on time? Uh, what's my favorite bourbon? What's ever in my hand? Mm. This Angel Envy is so good. Russell's are really into bourbon. Um, they had some really good stuff. Um, but go watch those two uh, documentaries. You have a lot better appreciation for it. How are we doing on time? Um, wind this down in a few minutes. Although you're all still in here. Uh, let's see. Uh... Kathmandu, 
Hi, welcome back. Quick tip, simple anti-theft for vans with swivel seats. Turn the seat and put a small lock on swivel base to prevent it from being rotated. It makes an immobilizer. That's interesting because once the seat is twisted around, that will not go into gear. So it's disabled um, at the most basic point from the... Um, uh, that's a good idea. Except I would forget I did that and get very frustrated. Okay, we'll do a, the song of the week here. But good good tip. Thank you, Catman Do. Appreciate that. So here is, this might be a new person. Uh, I can't really read it. Man, my eyes are getting so bad. I need to start wearing my, my cheaters. Um, how, uh, so I can't read your, is it M-I-R-O? Uh, how open is the RV van life community to diversity? How accepting and open is it? I've never had a problem. Um, I see more, um, if I think of the vans, van travelers it's kind of the 30 to 40 50 set than the 50 to 70 set um, uh, mostly white um, that's changing though a lot of campgrounds I'm in there's some folks of color and I always give them a thumb up um, but gay people let see a lot of lesbians but um, I have never had any problems I if people aren't you know, I'm not gay first, everything else second. I'm actually, actually the last thing on my mind. Um, I'm just me. And uh, so most people don't even know what my flavor is. And that's fine. Um, so maybe I don't show my colors. But um, I've never had a problem. Um, some of you out there have had similar experiences. So um, I just treat everybody the way I want to be treated. Um, just be polite. And um, if you're fanatic one way or the other, Adios. I was in a, a quick bar story. This was in uh, Oshkosh um, after the farmer's market. I strolled in for a, a beer and uh, was waiting for this movie to start, this theater. It was a great, great movie I wanted to see, an old movie in a theater. I don't know why those don't come back in theaters. Um, and this guy just started going on about Trump. And I'm like, dude, I'm not in here to discuss any of that with you. And he's like three seats down. And... I kind of signaled the bartender. I'm like, like you're going to let this guy go on about this? And um, he didn't. And the guy did. Uh, he'll keep going. And I'm like, see ya. So I just, you know, we have vans. If I don't like where I'm at, I put it in drive away. So I think it's fine. I've never had a problem. Welcome to the community. Welcome to the van life community. Just uh, glad, to, glad to have you here. If you don't like what's going on, move along. That's my motto. Uh, are you here again? His friend is somebody to appreciate. That's no, always uh, would do it. Wasn't sure. How about you, Scott? Uh, what's that? Uh, not sure what you want to do there, but uh, Luke and Buck. Yeah, we're, I'm working on some ideas there. Stay tuned and um, okay. So we do this, and then we'll call it a wrap. Um, 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 where am I? super early in the morning okay so let's do a song of the week um so this is a little bizarre tonight just because of uh where i came from just recently so let me zoom in here for you uh so you find this on your music app this is an italian pop band i have no idea how to say it uh the gioronalisti uh, i love italian um i actually picked up a fair amount of the salutation type words in italian Complimente is the name of the song, but take a screenshot of that. If you like kind of 80s electronic fusion pop songs, um, you're going to like this song. They're a newish band. Um, this was their big hit that put them on the map, um, and it will really get your toe tapping. And what I like to do is where I'm in uh, you know, establishment, or in this case, we in the Airbnb, we put it on Vivo to Italian pop music and when a song came up I you know asked Siri what the uh, song was I get it I load it up and um, that's why I just discovered music that's why I discovered country music for heaven's sake um, so uh, if you want something different in your ears tomorrow or tonight I can take a screenshot and um, zoom in here one more time for you um, kind of a provocative cover but nonetheless uh, I think you'll like them if you like that kind of 80s electronic dance ish stuff it's really a good really good uh, really good band um, I guess I think that's it right 
yeah, thumb up for tonight. You guys stayed long, and uh, it's a great group, and uh, we're just getting started. I got so many videos already loaded. Um, we're going to actually chop up the um, What's Up Wednesday guest hosts into van tip videos. Some superb van tips so that everybody needs to see those. Um, and I am uh, excited to do the next couple weeks and then get back to home base and uh, do the family thing for a little bit, help Kyle out. we got some uh, crazy plans there. Um, and then um, and then Super uh, super Show in, in January and then the Van Life Gathering. And I'm wandering off uh, across the south. Maybe get on a cruise boat in March, fly to Fort Lauderdale to do that down the South America. Um, I'm just so into sharing this stuff, and the travel thing is top of mind. Um, but I just want to thank each and every one of you for for being there. You have no idea how much you mean to me, and I could literally not do this without you and your support. And um, I just want you to get, if you haven't, many of you are doing this already, but if you're not, really think about what's your bucket list? What's your plan for 2023? We are at the end of the year. We got six weeks until it's 2023. The world is open. It's melting down in some places. But let me tell you, if you want to forget all the BS going on in America, however you want to define it, go to Europe. You don't know a thing going on except what's going on around you. It's the most, it's the most refreshing thing. And if you can't do that, get in your van, even rent a van, and just go do something very different. Um, brand new year, six weeks away. What are your plans for travel uh, for 2023? Uh, I'm making my plans right now. Uh, it's going to be a great year. Um, there's my plan right up there. See this? Get this off the screen. Uh, you can see it. See that? That's what my year looks like. Going up, across the south, up the uh, Colorado, Utah. Seattle and then down to um, California rinse and repeat staying in fair weather um, there's so much to do and see so thank you for what you do for me um, you'll know you never know how important you are to me and I mean that with all my heart and um, we just want to learn share and get you moving uh, whatever that means to you write your story you could, we could all be dead tomorrow um, life's too short so all right folks thank you we'll uh, call it a wrap for tonight see you next Wednesday What's up, Wednesday? New video on Sunday. I can't think what it is. But again, a big shout out to our guest host uh, for the last four weeks, uh, keeping us going. Uh, didn't miss a beat. They did a great job. So we see you soon. I wish you to journey on and peace be with you. See you soon.